Hi, I'm Jerry Kaplan, one of the offering managers for IBM DatapowerGateways. Gateways. In this presentation, I'm going to show you how DatapowerGateways Gateways can now be deployed into cloud environments. I'll start with a brief overview of DatapowerGateways Gateways and some of the more traditional use cases, then I'll show you how Datapower fits into cloud deployments. For the past 30 years or so, we've spent a lot of time perfecting our systems of record and creating ways of accessing them. Our systems of record have been built out to be very secure, very reliable, very available, and very scalable. Historically, this has worked really well for us. The problem with this is that when we have to build something to accommodate new engagements or support a new channel such as mobile, or we have to add a new B2B trading partner or analytics channel, we have to build everything end to end. Security is compromised, our systems become fragile and often unreliable. We've really perfected the art of designing and building our new enterprises while keeping the old enterprise in mind. Unfortunately, the digital revolution caused the enterprise landscape to change. Today, the enterprise landscape looks more like this and extends well beyond the boundaries of your network. And on top of that, systems of engagement have changed too. The web browser used to be status quo for accessing our enterprise data, but now, in the digital economy, it's about mobile devices interacting with back-end systems. It's about sensors and healthcare devices relaying crucial time-sensitive data to specialized services. It's about connected appliances or jumbo jets that automatically request maintenance when a part breaks, gaming consoles, the list goes on and on. The problem that companies of all sizes are facing is as we update our enterprise architecture to accommodate these new systems of engagement, we have to adapt our network infrastructure to support the new channels. For example, you may already have a SOA gateway that protects web services, but to support APIs, you'll need a specialized API gateway. And maybe you need to support mobile devices, so add a specialized mobile gateway. For B2B traffic, you need a specialized gateway that manages partner connections and supports B2B protocols such as AS2. Although all these specialized gateways solve some problems, they also create some new ones. For starters, you probably need to open a hole in the firewall for each one, and each one probably requires specialized skills to configure and manage, and each one probably uses its own policy language. The way we see it, Heterogeneous security policy combined with a Swiss cheese firewall is a recipe for security vulnerabilities, slow time to market, and a lack of agility, not to mention it's expensive too. The ideal security and integration gateway for the multi-channel enterprise should be able to help secure, control, integrate, and optimize workloads across all the different business channels using a consistent policy-based approach. The IBM Data Power Gateway provides an integrated set of capabilities that are designed to help ease the process of becoming an extended enterprise. And because Data Power is usually the first point of entry and egress for data moving in and out of your enterprise, it's ideally positioned to gather essential information to feed your big data and analytics systems. We break up Data Power's capabilities into the four pillars shown on this slide. For security, data power can act as a reverse proxy as well as a policy enforcement point to secure network traffic. It can perform cryptographic operations on message payloads such as encryption and decryption as well as create or verify digital signatures. It can validate message conformance using JSON and XML schema to assure the message content contains no threats. Data Power can help with integration tasks such as transforming messages from JSON to XML or XML to COBOL copybook. It can perform protocol bridging such as receiving a message over HTTP and putting the payload on a message queue. The control pillar highlights how Data Power can perform content based routing, quota enforcement, and rate limiting amongst other traffic tasks. And finally, data power can optimize workloads with response caching, intelligent load distribution, and a variety of capabilities that reduce the load on your back-end systems. One of the key drivers of the digital revolution is the need to expose services and data through the use of APIs. Data Power helps secure the message content for all API interactions and then utilizes advanced routing controls to manage and enforce service level policies. 
When data power is used as the gateway with the IBM API management solution, developers can compose and socialize new APIs in the API management console and have security policy automatically enforced on data power. All API interactions and traffic are logged and reported to the API management analytics component, which enables both runtime and historical analytics and reporting. With the API management product, you also get API subscription management, API version management, lifecycle governance, API socialization, and analytics on top of data power. Data power is equally adept at securing and controlling mobile channels. When combined with the IBM Security Access Manager module, the IBM Data Power Gateway provides enhanced user access security, such as multi factor authentication and one time passwords for web and mobile applications. Data Power acts as a highly scalable reverse proxy for user access control and web single sign on, along with enforcement of context based access policies. As an integration gateway, Data Power can perform many protocol and transformation functions at the network edge that might normally be done by an ESB. We've seen many customers deploy Data Power in front of IBM Integration Bus or other ESBs in order to offload processor intensive cryptography and transformation actions. For example, Data Power can be used as an SSL termination point, decrypt inbound content, verify digital signatures, transform messages from XML or JSON into COBOL copybook, then hand the message to the ESB. There are several ways to configure and manage data power gateways. Developers will typically use the web user interface to create and edit services. There's a drag and drop policy editor and interactive debuggers to help quickly build policies. There's a command line interface that's better suited for network configuration tasks such as setting up network interfaces or time servers. Then there's two additional interfaces that are used for automation tasks. One is based on SOAP and the other is based on REST. These interfaces allow you to easily integrate configuration deployment and promotion tasks and use modern tools like Urban Code Deploy. Finally, Data Power is monitored just like any other network appliance. It supports standardized logging protocols such as Syslog and standard based monitoring protocols such as SNMP. So, how is Data Power customized? There may be times when you need to extend Data Power's capabilities to accomplish something very specific to your organization. For example, Data Power supports a very wide array of identity managers for doing authentication and authorization, but maybe your organization has a homegrown identity manager. In that case, you may need to create something custom in order to perform authentication against your custom service instead of something such as an LDAP. You can easily extend Data Power's functionality by creating customizations written either in JavaScript or XSLT. Data Power gateways are available in several form factors. First, the physical form factor is an ultra secure, tamper resistant hardware appliance that meets some of the most stringent security certifications. It's pumped up with about 20 or so processors and 192 gigabytes of memory. There's a virtual form factor that's deployable in VMware ESX Server and VMware Workstation, as well as Citrix Zen Server. For this form factor, you can adjust memory and processor as necessary. This is a very convenient way of providing personal data power devices to developers and test engineers. We have specialized images that are deployable into Amazon EC2 as well as IBM SoftLayer. For SoftLayer, you also have the flexibility to deploy either on bare metal servers or virtual servers. And finally, data power can be deployed into IBM Pure application environments. As you can see on this slide, we also have a number of installable modules that add specialized capabilities to data power. For example, the iSAM module adds enhanced user access security such as multi-factor authentication and one-time passwords for mobile and web applications. So that's kind of a quick 1-2-3 overview of the new version of data power. Now let's talk a little bit about cloud. So before I get into this slide, I want to take a brief moment to distinguish what I'm talking about when I refer to public, private, and hybrid clouds. At the root of it, 
All clouds are generally made up of three or four basic parts as shown on this slide. There's the system of record where data is stored. There's the systems of engagement. These can be mobile apps, web apps, the Internet of Things, a new Xbox, you name it. Then you have your services which interact with your systems of engagement and access the systems of record. And finally, there may be some systems of insight to collect data for analytics. Of course, these are the most basic elements of the cloud, but for this discussion, these are the parts that we think about when we talk about public, private, and hybrid cloud. The primary difference between these types of clouds is where each part lives. For a public cloud, all parts, including systems of record and services, are deployed in a public cloud. You could have your systems of record at MongoLab and your services deployed in Bluemix. You rely entirely on the cloud providers to maintain the infrastructure. For a private cloud, you keep the systems of record and services in your private network. You have complete control and responsibility to maintain the infrastructure. And to make it more cloud-like, you leverage a lot of virtualized systems. And finally, as shown in this slide, a hybrid cloud keeps the systems of record close to home and protected in your network, but services are deployed both in the public cloud and in your private network. So looking closer at this slide, you can see that it really shows an enterprise hybrid cloud with services deployed in the cloud and systems of record kept on premise. Here's an example of a public cloud deployment of data power into the Amazon cloud. The systems of record are deployed using Amazon RDS, and the services are all deployed on EC2 servers. You've got an Amazon Elastic Load Balancer in the front to receive all inbound traffic from the systems of engagement. In this scenario, data power has been uploaded and deployed in an EC2 server instance. It's a full-blown data power appliance. It may be providing security or cryptographic acceleration or possibly request throttling to enforce service level agreements. And since it's in the Amazon cloud, data power can also play nicely with other Amazon services that support access via APIs. For example, it could connect to an Amazon ElastiCache in order to accelerate response times. There's a great cost benefit to this type of deployment. For one, you can completely eliminate infrastructure and maintenance costs in lieu of a pay-as-you-go model. This slide shows how data power can provide a secure conduit between the public Amazon cloud services and an on-premises system of record. There's a number of interesting things going on here. A request might come in from a mobile device as a JSON request. It'll pass through the load balancer to data power, which might decrypt the payload using elliptic curve cryptography, then possibly make a side call to the on-premises data power in order to obtain some information from the system of record. Once data power receives the data, it can bundle the payload together with the retrieved data and pass it to the backend service running in EC2. The response from the server will pass back through data power, which will then encrypt and sign the response and send it back to the client. In this scenario, I'm showing data power deployed into the IBM SoftLayer cloud. The highlight here is that data power may be handling both incoming and outgoing requests. Consider a flow where a mobile device makes a secure JSON request. Data Power decrypts the message and performs any authentication. It then passes the request to the backend cloud servers for processing. During processing, the backend servers may make an outbound request to Data Power, which will then convert the request into an API for Salesforce.com to retrieve some data about the customer. Another thing that might be going on here is that the backend services running in SoftLayer may be performing analytics based on social data from Twitter. The backend service can make its request through data power, which will mediate and secure the requests going to Twitter. Now, in the case of Bluemix, right now we focus exclusively on the hybrid cloud model. In this slide, notice that data power is not deployed in Bluemix. Rather, there's a special secure gateway service that you can add to your Bluemix application. The secure gateway service then becomes an endpoint for an on-premises data power to connect to using a specialized secure gateway service. At first, this may seem similar to the other hybrid deployments. 
However, the Amazon and SoftLayer deployments were using mutual SSL to connect to data power, whereas in this case, the on-premises data power makes an outbound connection to the Bluemix secure gateway and creates a persistent, fault-tolerant, secure tunnel to your Bluemix application. In this way, your cloud application can gain access to on-premises services and systems of record in a secure manner without punching any new holes in the firewall. Remember, the on-premises data power reached out to the cloud, not the other way around. The IBM Pure Application Platform is basically a cloud in a box. It's unique because it not only enables you to deploy virtualized infrastructure, but it comes with tons of predefined patterns that you can use and customize. For example, there's a pattern for deploying a mobile application infrastructure that includes things like IBM Mobile Foundation, WebSphere Application Server, and maybe some form of a database. So with just a few clicks, you can set up a fully functional infrastructure. Data Power is available in Pure Application, so it can be deployed as part of the patterns too. An interesting aspect of Pure Application is that you can create a fully functioning infrastructure locally and then push the whole infrastructure out to the Pure Application cloud. Of course, like in the other clouds, Data Power is fully functional and can perform security, integration, and control functions. Now, on the next few slides, I'm going to show you how IBM is using both physical and virtual data power deployments to secure cloud infrastructure. Bluemix is IBM's premier cloud platform as a service. Our customers love it and rely on it for all types of deployments, including mission-critical cloud applications and cloud-based systems of record. The Bluemix infrastructure uses data power gateways for edge security and request routing, amongst other things. IBM's Watson technology is revolutionary and our customers are using Watson in ways we would have never imagined. Our customers can access Watson over the internet or they can build applications running in Bluemix and include Watson components. As you can see from this slide, IBM Watson also uses data power gateways as part of their infrastructure. And finally, IBM's API management software as a service offering leverages data power gateways to process and route API traffic, as well as collect usage analytics and enforce rate quotas. So to summarize this presentation, I showed you that data power can simplify your network infrastructure by being the sole gateway for multiple channels of traffic. With its new virtual and cloud form factors, you can leverage the same data power technology in virtualized and cloud environments. Before I conclude, I just want to show you where you can learn more about data power gateways. I'm Jerry Kaplan, and thanks for listening.